Welcome back. We're going to talk about some more weapons today. I've had a few requests regarding the weapons system, so we'll go and revisit a bit of that. First thing on the to-do list, we're going to make it so that we can pick up weapons on the battlefield. Pop over to weapons and we're going to open up weapon underscore base. All the changes we need to make are inside weapon base because all weapons will be picked up the same way. So let's get rid of this event actor begin overlap. We don't need that. We're going to put our own event actor begin overlap later on. Now, this will mean that weapons can be in two states. The first will be we're holding the weapon. Second state will be the weapon is not equipped and it is on the ground ready to be picked up. So to determine the difference between that state, we're going to get parent actor. This is going to get whatever this blueprint here is attached to. If it's equipped, it will be attached to the player. This would also count if the weapon is attached to an enemy. If there is no parent actor, then this won't return anything. So we'll get is valid. Go for the question mark here. So is valid means that there is a parent actor, means we're attached to something. Thus, the weapon is equipped. If the weapon does not have a parent actor, then it is not equipped. So based on these results, let's go over to variables, is equipped, enter, hold alt and drag two of those in. If we have a parent actor, we will be equipped. So we'll tick that. And if there is no parent actor, we are not equipped. Let's compile and save that. So now let's go and add a box. Let's go to add component and we're going to get our box trigger. It's called box collision. We're just going to call it box trigger. Next up, let's right click on box trigger, add event on component begin, click on box trigger again, add component end. So now the first thing we do on these is check is the weapon equipped and I'm holding control so I can get a getter instead of a setter. Holding B and clicking here, we'll get our branches, attach our branches to the executable, and we're going to need a not boolean here. So grab that, type in not, and grab our not boolean, just like that. Just copying and pasting that not boolean and selecting everything, pressing Q to clean it up. So that's the first step because we don't want this trigger to fire if we're holding the weapon. That would be really annoying. Next thing we want to check is if the overlapped actor is indeed us. So let's get another branch, holding B and clicking anywhere on the graph. If the weapon is not equipped, we will ask other actor, double equal sign for is equal to, is it equal to our hero reference, which we don't need to hold control for because it's going to be attached to a getter component. And we'll do the same down here. Plug in other actor, not other component or other comp, just other actor. So is the weapon equipped? If it's not equipped, is it the hero that's interacted? Because we don't want to fire the script off if say an enemy walks past the weapon. And if we want to script the enemy to be able to pick up a weapon, then we're going to do that very differently. Now here is where it might get a little sticky. The situation is this, if we're holding an assault rifle, we don't want to be able to pick up two assault rifles, thus picking it up in our other weapon slot. So let's grab our hero reference, drag off of that and get weapon slot one and we want the class here. Copying our hero reference over again. Now let's get weapon slot two. So we're going to check these weapon slots to make sure that this weapon is not the same as any of the current weapons we have equipped. We're using class references because if we were using a blue reference, that is to a very specific actor. But if we're referring to a class, we're referring to a type of actor. So in this case, we're not referring to a specific weapon, we're referring to a type of weapon, which means we also need the class reference for where we are now. So type in self, get class down in utilities, 
and we want to check that these are not equal. So exclamation mark and equal sign, and it will automatically be purple because we're dragging off there. We're going to copy that and paste another one down there because we're not going to add a node here. We're not checking if they're equal to each other. So we need to check both of these. And instead of adding an individual branch for them, we can type in and dragging off the red Boolean. And then we'll hold B, get another branch and attach that and there. So this is what we're checking for. making sure that we don't double up on our weapons. Now, if all those conditions are met, we'll get player controller. And enable input, same as our health pack. We don't want to enable input on the player controller. We want to enable input on this, the blueprint. So target self, and we need a player controller reference. And then the opposite for end overlap, copy over our player controller, disable input, holding control and dragging on that connection or holding alt to disconnect it. And then just so they're in line so that it makes it easier. So if I'm looking for inputs, I'm looking in essentially the same column. I'm going to just move these guys over. Once we know we can interact with the weapon, the next thing we want to do is pick the weapon up. To do that, we're obviously going to need to press a button. So that button here for me is going to be action reload. The first part is quite easy. We just drag on our hero reference, get equipped weapon. So that's essentially the slot that we are housing our weapon in. It's the component attached to our hero. And from there, we will set child actor class. So this node here, and we will use that self get class reference here. And plug that in. So that's the easy part done. Next up, we have to set the weapon slots themselves. So the class references we've stored. So let's go and get our weapon slot Boolean by getting our hero reference again. Get weapon slot. And this time without a number, we'll get that Boolean. If you remember that Boolean determines which weapon slot we actually have. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted a Boolean to determine which slot it is. So it might seem counterintuitive, but what we need to do here is spawn the weapon that we are dropping in the world before we change the slot. So if I have that weapon slot here and I change it now, I say set weapon slot one to whatever this class is, then now that I've wiped that, it means that I can't drop that weapon now. Because if I drop whatever's in weapon slot one, it will be this weapon that I've just picked up. So let's spawn actor from class. And which class we use is going to be picked by a select node. and the selection is going to be based on whether our weapon slot is true or false. So we'll need a little more room to do this. If you wanted, you could use the one hero reference. Now, if you're not sure which slot is true and which slot is false, the best way to find out is to just go back to your hero reference here. So that is core and B underscore hero for me. If I click on the weapon slot here, I can see that false is the first weapon slot. So if yours was true, then the tick would be your first weapon slot. So whichever weapon slot this variable is set to as a default is your first weapon slot. So back over to weapon base, False is going to be weapon slot one, and true is going to be weapon slot two for me. 
And if yours was the other way around, then you would just rearrange these. Now physics are their own headache, so instead of us spawning the weapon directly in front of us and dropping it, as we will do in the future, for now let's get actor transform. And then we're going to get our hero reference once again and set weapon slot one. or set weapon slot two based on whichever weapon slot we have for this Boolean. So we'll get our weapon slot again from now hero reference, get weapon slot, attach that to a branch. Again, we're gonna need a bit more room here. And if you want to keep weapon slot one on top and weapon slot two on the bottom, if your Boolean is false, then you can do what I do, which is to put a not Boolean there. So if weapon slot is not true, thus if it is false, then we can plug true into there and false into there. And what we want to set it to is our self get class. Here's an example of where it might be neater if we use one reference for each. So I'm going to use one hero reference there and another hero reference here. And then finally, destroy actor. So let's compile and save that. We have the green tick of approval. Let's pop over to the test map. Let's grab our weapons. We'll start with the assault rifle and the pistol and the shotgun and the sniper rifle and the rocket launcher. I'm going to make these nice and neat in presentation. One last thing we'll do for testing is just throw a print string on enable and disable so that we know we can pick up the weapon. So when we can pick it up, we'll get the old fashioned hello. And when we can't pick it up anymore, we'll get a good bye. And this will also tell us whether or not we have a large enough radius on this box. So let's compile and save that over to the map hit play. Now I shouldn't be able to pick up the assault rifle and the pistol because those are my default weapons. I shouldn't get any text here. I did get a text walking out of there because I'm not doing that check to see if the weapons aren't duplicated while walking out. I'll get the goodbye text here but now with the shotgun that's the first time I should get the hello text. And it is. So now I should be able to pick up the shotgun when I press E on my keyboard and it should leave behind the assault rifle. Just like that. So now I have the shotgun and I can shoot it and I can reload it and treat it like a normal weapon. If I go back to this assault rifle here, I get the hello and I can pick it up and trade that. Now, if I was to press Q and get my pistol out, now let's say I wanted to have the assault rifle in my first slot, just like I do. I will pick up the shotgun in the second slot. If I press Q, I am switching back and forth between the assault rifle and the shotgun now. Now let's say I wanted to switch that assault rifle out for a sniper rifle. I'm gonna stand over the sniper rifle, press E. It trades with an assault rifle and I have the sniper and I'm pressing Q to switch back between. So everything is working as intended. And in the next episode, we'll add some more features to it. Yeah.